You've probably heard the cynical line that fusion is always 30 years away. Well, the people repeating that nonsense are either misinformed or they're lying. The reality is that fusion is as far away as the level of funding and investment puts it. That's not my opinion. That's been known for 40 years. Here's the facts. In 1976, the U.S. Energy Research and Development Administration produce an exhaustive five-volume study outlining what would be needed to achieve reliable and affordable fusion power reactors. And this wasn't just a plan to produce one reactor. This was a proposal to build critical engineering facilities and pursue multiple different reactor designs. The toroidal-shaped tokamak was seen as the most promising, but they also wanted to pursue designs for a linear, mirrored confinement system as well as at least one alternative design based on utilizing certain unique characteristics of high temperature, high density plasmas to create fusion reactions through runaway so-called pinch effects. And the idea was to pursue these multiple designs through multiple stages of systems. Start with basic experiments, then test reactors for each design, then a couple of different experimental power reactors, and finally converge on one design for a demonstration power plant, often called DEMO, a first generation reliable fusion system to produce electricity for the grid, something which would be the basis for a second generation of economically viable commercial plants. It wasn't predetermined which reactor design would be chosen for DEMO. It would be based on the performance of the various systems at each stage. So this was a serious, rigorous assessment of what it would take to develop a completely new technology built around new physical processes far different than any type of power generation before. And to be able to do all this, they obviously defined the funding needed to achieve each of those steps. And they even outlined different time frames and funding paths to do this. The slowest path with the lowest average annual funding required was expected to have a demonstration fusion power plant online by 2005. A bit more of an accelerated effort would have brought DEMO online in 1998. A bit more funding and effort, DEMO by 1993. And if a real crash effort was made, the quickest path to DEMO was a plan for fusion power by 1990. So the requirements, time frame, and funding for a serious push for fusion power were made clear in 1976. But they also made another very important assessment. If funding was to remain flat, say at the 1978 level, fusion power would likely never be achieved. Again, this was known and published in 1976 in this exhaustive study on the requirements for fusion power. It was already clear then fusion power wouldn't be achieved unless adequate additional support was given. And here's the point. With all of this known for 40 years now, what has been the actual funding for magnetic confinement fusion since the release of this report? Significantly less than a level that was already identified as a fusion never policy. The funding has been well below a level predetermined as too little to achieve demo. What does this mean? We've had an effective policy to not develop fusion power. The US policy for 40 years has been to not do what was known to be needed to achieve fusion. So is fusion always 30 years away? Well, if you don't fund it, you can certainly make that the case. But that's saying something about the priorities and policies of the US government not something about fusion. So it's time to end this insanity. Quit wasting time and resources on silly things like windmills, solar power, and the like, and let's get into the future. Let's get into fusion. So get on the LaRouche Pack website, get active, and learn more.